Alright, welcome back, gentlemen. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the camera in Blender, okay? Now, this is one of those things that not a lot of people talk about, but you can't really get very far without knowing how to use the camera, okay? It's one of the most important things. Everybody's talking about modeling, procedural texturing, uh, substance painter, and all this different shit. You can't get very far unless you know how to use the camera, okay? Now, I, I don't know how much you guys know about the camera, who's a complete beginner, who has some uh, experience already, so I'm just going to go from scratch. I'm going to explain some of the most important functions, the shit that you need to know, right, if you're a beginner. Now, whatever we're talking about here in this video today, it's a little bit of an excerpt from my beginner course, okay? You can find the link below. And we talked about all the most important shit that you need to know that you can't get by without, right? From modeling, texturing, rendering, even a little bit of post-processing. We also talked about the camera, but I'm going to talk about the camera on video today because I think it's an important thing and I want to talk to you guys about this here today, okay? So I'm just going to show you how the camera works, what you can do with it, and all this different stuff, right? I'm just going to start rambling about the camera and then hopefully you find something useful from the tutorial, all right? Now, first of all, the camera is this little thing over here, okay? And I got my screen gas keys over here in the corner so that when I use some shortcuts and shit, you guys can see what I'm pressing, right? This here, this thing over here is a camera. I, don't, I know it doesn't look like a camera, but it is a camera, okay? And I'm going to explain to you why it's shaped the way that it's shaped in a moment, okay? Let me just fix my hair. I basically just woke up. So the camera, you can pretty much look at it as any other 3D object in the scene, but it is invisible. It's really more like an empty, okay? And empties are just these things that you can add from over here, like a cube or something. It's a, it's like a wireframe structure, okay? But it's there in the scene. You can treat it like a 3D object. You can move it around. You can scale it. You can rotate it and all this different shit, right? But you cannot see it in a render, okay? It's not a visible object. It's just a skeleton frame. It's just there as like a placeholder or something. Usually, you're going to use uh, empties if you want to rig something, if you want to parent something and stuff like that, right? Or placeholders or whatever. That, and this basically behaves the same way as an empty. So it's there, but it's not visible. But you can treat it like, like a 3D object. You can move it around, spin it, whatever. And the camera is responsible for turning our 3D scene, what we have over here in our viewport, it's responsible for turning that into a rendered image. Okay. So for example, if we go over here to our camera view, I can press the number pad, zero on the number pad to enter the camera view. So wherever the camera is placed, by default, it's something like this. And your default scene is just up here and looking at the scene from an angle. You can press zero to enter the scene. And this is what the camera sees within this frame over here. All right. So now if we press F12, or alternatively, if you go up here to render and render image, it's the same thing. It's going to turn your scene into a rendered image. Okay. Now I have Eevee right now, I think. And I'm also recording. So it's going to take a little while to turn this into an image. And it looks probably horrible because it's Eevee, right? But anyway, the idea is it turns, it, it calculates all the lights and all the reflections and all the backgrounds and all this different shit. And it turns it into a final image. And you can now export this image up here, image save as, and take it somewhere else, post-process it, whatever you want, right? This is what the camera does. And as you can see, it's exactly it's exactly what we see in this camera, in this frame over here. That's what we have as a final image, right? So the camera kind of defines the frame, let's say. Let's close that. Now, the camera, as I said, you can treat it like any other object. So you can just place it somewhere else, and you can rotate it a little bit, right? You can do that. But the problem with this kind of... Uh, adjustment this kind of placement is that it's it's you don't have a very good idea of what it sees as you're moving it okay so the better thing that you can do is you can place your 3d view somewhere let's say you want to have a back view like this or something like that i can place my 3d view like this and then i have to press Control alt and then i press zero on the number pad okay and it's going to snap the camera from wherever it was previously onto the place where i have my 3d view at the moment so the camera is now going to look at whatever it is that i was looking for with my 3d view right as you can see, now the camera is placed over here. It has this location, this rotation, and all this stuff. Right? I can just do that from the top as well if I want to. And that's going to change the placement of the camera. So control alt zero on the number pad. Write that one down. It's important. Okay. So this is this, these are a couple of ways that you can move the camera. But I'm going to show you something even cooler for making small adjustments. This is my favorite thing. I think I don't know. I haven't seen anybody else talk about this, but this is a little secret. You're only going to find this stuff on here. Okay. Let's say we have our camera over here, like this, right? And I'm looking at it now with my 3D view. I'm sitting back. I'm looking at what I'm about to render. And I'm thinking about, let me just turn my microphone a little bit better because I'm moving around and then the volume is, is changing up and down and everything. And I'm thinking about it. I don't really like it. You know, I don't know. Maybe I should try a different angle and whatnot. But it's like if I want to change the angle a little bit, I have to change my 3D view like this and then snap it again. It's a little bit clunky, right? If I want to just play around and see what the camera is going to see. It's a little bit clunky. But what I can also do is I can place my 3D cursor in the middle of the world or just on the object, right? 
let's say I place my 3D cursor on this tank. I'm going to select the tank and shift S cursor to select it. And then I'm going to set the 3D cursor as my pivot point, which means now when I select this camera with right click as I'm in camera view, right? Zero on the number pad, I'm in camera view. And I select this frame over here. I can press rotate and then I can just select the Z axis. And now the camera is just going to rotate around the scene, right? Look at that. I can just pivot it a little bit. I can maybe place the the 3d cursor somewhere else and rotate around that specific point okay so you can adjust the you have a lot more control over the camera let's say we can rotate it like this a little bit and then we can also just pan it with g okay we just slide it around somewhere else okay we can get a much better view we get we get much better control over how we're placing the camera right and then by extension you can also do the same thing on all the other axes right for example if i have my 3d cursor over here and i press rotate and then I press X. Now the camera is going to rotate around the X axis. That's probably not what you're going to want to do. What you can do instead is you press X twice, right? So rotate X and then X again. And now you're going to rotate around the local X axis of the camera. It's going to have the same angle as the camera, right? Which means now the cameras are going to move up and down like this, right? It, it's a lot more realistic. It's a lot more, uh, it's much more of a movement, which you might find useful in many cases, right? Alternatively, you can also do that with the Z axis, right? So if you press Z twice, so rotate to Z and then Z again, now you're going to rotate the camera around itself. You're going to just kind of pivot it around itself, right? Because now it's rotated around the local uh, Y axis or the local Z axis for the camera, right? And you can do the same with movement also. This shit is crazy. There's so much you can do, right? So press G and then press Z and then press Z again. And now you're just moving the camera inwards and outwards, okay? You can also slide it along its... Uh, it's a, a local x-axis, whatever you want, right? So just play around with the local axis a little bit. There's a lot of things that you can do like this. I don't think scaling the camera is going to do anything except maybe move it away from the 3D cursor, right? But if we just scale the camera itself, it doesn't really do anything, right? It, it does get larger to look at, but it doesn't change what we see through the camera, right? So that doesn't really make any sense. But this brings us to another more important thing. We're going to get into the details now because we were just talking about how you can move the camera inwards a little bit on the local z-axis, right? Let me show you this in 3D view, by the way. Because this camera is basically rotated so that its, its z-axis is pointing this way. Let me show you how this works, by the way, while we're at it. Let's say we add a cylinder, okay? And this cylinder, we can move it on the z-axis, x-axis, y-axis. But if we rotate this cylinder a little bit like this, in object mode, we rotate it like this. We can still move it on all these axes, but now it has its own axis because now the, the cylinder is rotated at like, I don't know, 20 degrees or something, which means its local Z axis is also rotated. So we can press G and press Z twice, and now we can just move it up and down in, that, in the direction that it's pointing at. That's, that's local axis, right? And that's the same thing that's happening with the camera. The camera is placed under a certain angle. So when you add a normal, when you add a new camera with Shift A camera, I think, oh yeah, by default it's already under, it's already a little bit rotated. But if you just place all the values to zero or something, by default this is the, the orientation of the camera, which means the z-axis is going this way, okay? And then if we rotate it, the z-axis is going this way, right? And that's exactly what we're doing over here. So we put ourselves in the camera view and just press G, uh, G and then Z twice and move in and out, and you're good to go, right? This is not the same as zooming in and out, okay? And I'm going to show you why. Because zooming in and out is very different from just changing the position of the camera or bringing it closer and further away, all right? What we're doing like this is we're just changing the position of the camera. But if we were to zoom in and out, that usually means that, well, not usually. What it means is that you have to, uh, you adjust the field of vision of a camera, okay? Which means you have a smaller objective that you just, you have a smaller frame that you're looking at. And you're focusing on a smaller part of, of the screen, let's say, okay? I'm going to show you how that works in a second, okay? So let's let's go over here to the camera properties down here. You have this when you select the camera, you get this new little tab, all right? Sometimes when you select a special type of object, you get all these new little tabs and shit on the side. It's pretty interesting. But now we have one for the camera. Okay. Fucking my hair is messy today. I, whatever, guys, you'll forgive me. We have these camera properties down here. And over here we can open up uh, well it's already open by default. We have this lens menu, and we can control the lens properties. Now, by default, this is probably going to be over here on 50 millimeters or something. The, the focal length is what I'm talking about. That's basically the level of zoom. I'm going to show you what exactly the focal length does. If we put ourselves in the perspective of the camera with zero on the number pad, and we increase the focal length, now we're zooming in, okay? And if we decrease the focal length, now we're zooming out. So now we have a bigger field of vision. The camera is still in the same place, right? 
but it just kind of zooms in and zooms out. It just changes the shape a little bit. Right? I'm going to explain to you how this works in a second. But this is very different from zooming in and zoom uh, from moving in and moving outwards, right? Zooming is very different because your final product is very different. Because what we can do is, for example, we can reduce the focal length to something like this, to something very low, like a nine millimeter, um, uh, like a nine millimeter focal length or something. And then if we just zoom in or if we bring the camera closer, we have a very wide field of vision. So we, the camera picks up a, a large part of, of the tank, right? It picks up a lot. It's kind of like you're playing Minecraft uh, you, on, on fucking uh, uh, Quake Pro uh, field of vision. Right? You know, when you crank that valley all the way up, you can see everything. And it's like it's moving really fast. That's kind of the same shit. That's, that's li literally what happens in Minecraft when you increase your field of vision. But this is pretty extreme. And then you can, you're probably going to want to keep it around something like between 30 and, I don't know, 70 millimeters or something like that, okay? And what happens here is that we're basically changing how much the camera is picking up from the uh, from the point where it's standing, right? So if you look over here, we play when we go, when we enter camera view with zero, we place our th 3D view onto this exact point back here, okay? Onto the origin of the camera, this little spike back here. You're gonna see that when we press zero, this is where we snap to, okay? And when we move out, this is exactly where we were placed. So we can also do that manually and then press zero, something like this. So we're, we're observing from this point. This is the observation point. And then this frame defines what enters that point. Okay. Now, the further away this frame is from the point of observation, the, the smaller it's going to be in, uh, in, in relation, right? So it's going to pick up a smaller image, essentially, which means if we increase the focal length, this frame moves further away. So when we look at the, the the frame from this observation point over here, it's a smaller image that we're picking up, but we still have to fit it onto the same size screen, right? So it looks like it's zoomed in. You see what I'm saying? Like if we if we place our view over here, and we change the focal length, if we make it shorter, now this frame gets a lot bigger, and now we're picking up all this stuff from the outside and turning it into an image. But if we increase the focal length, okay, now we have a much smaller frame, and now we're only focusing on this one part which means if we render the image now, now it's only going to have this one little close up part of the tank, which is fitted inside the frame, right? As you can see over here, whereas obviously, if we increase it, if we increase it, it's going to be the same thing It's laggy to render, but you understand what I'm trying to get at with this. So the focal length just defines the distance from this frame uh, to, to uh, and the observation point, right? That's what the focal length does basically zoom in, zoom out. And that's a very important thing, because it's, it's very different. Sometimes you want to capture uh, if you want to capture like a room or something, you're going to want to decrease your focal length. But if you're rendering like a vehicle or something or be an airplane or something like that, probably you're going to want to have a very uh, a large focal length because it's like it's zoomed in. If you've ever seen a picture of an airplane, it's taken from like a kilometer away. Obviously, you don't have a guy standing next to the airplane in the sky. You have a dude on the ground and he's looking at the airplane like through a telescope, basically. So it's a very long focal length. He has one of those long cameras with like a fucking telescopic uh, lens at the end or, or something like that, right? That's exactly what it is. It's a longer focal length. It's a longer lens. It's a longer camera. So it's the same thing there. And now that we have that out of the way, let's just bring that back to something like 50, the default or something like that, just so we can talk about it a little bit more. I'll show you some more, some more cool features about the camera. Let's go over to our textured view for another little demonstration, because this is not going to work in a 3D clay preview or math cap preview like this. We can go to our texture view. And let me change my math cap to something a little bit a little bit nicer or something like this so you can see the shape of the object a little bit better i just finished making this tank by the way we're gonna have a video on this uh, out soon it's gonna be fucking crazy it was one of the coolest tanks I've ever made um so now we have a we have our textured view we can see the textures and stuff like that uh, we can we can kind of see how the hdri is affecting the uh, the scene here and what we can do now is we can check this little box down here which has depth of field right and depth of field is basically which part of the uh, of the field that you're looking at are, are you focusing your camera on, okay? So if you're taking a close-up picture of a flower or some shit in real life, the flower is going to be sharp and focused on while the background is going to be very blurry, okay? Or the other way around. Maybe you want to focus on something in the distance while everything closer to you is going to be blurry. It's going to be out of focus. That's exactly what we're about to do with this, uh, with this camera here. So I'm going to show you how this works. Let's say I'm going to place my camera... Let's say I want to focus on something specific, maybe like this part in the back. It's kind of difficult. Maybe I just want to focus on the tip of the gun over here. I'm going to place my camera right here. I want to focus on the gun. I want to make everything else blurry. So now the focal, the focal distance by default, it's like 10 meters, which is somewhere in the back over there. 
but I can change this. I can slide this. I can bring this a little bit closer. Okay, and now you can see it's on 1.8 meters. Now the gun is sharp. The gun is in focus, but everything else is blurry. Okay, or we can also increase it, or we can take it to the background somewhere. Now we're also going to uh, change the number, the f-stop value. I googled what f-stop means the other day, but I can't remember what the fuck it means now. Some kind of ratio between like focal length and number of something. If you Google it, you'll understand it's pretty simple. But anyway, what I understand f-stop is if, if I explain it in my own words, as somebody who's not into photography, the f-stop is uh, is the level of contrast between uh, between the, the amount of blur, right? So if the f-stop value is very low, that means there is a, a huge difference in the level of blur uh, in the uh, from the object in focus and the background. As you can see now, it's almost zero. This part is sharp, it's in focus, while the background is completely blurry, okay? But if we increase this, the difference is not as significant. We're still focusing on the same thing, but just the background is a lot less blurry if we increase the f-stop value, right? So you can also use this to your advantage, and now you can play around with this a little bit if you move your camera somewhere else. It's going to focus on different parts, right? It's very it's very cool for renders sometimes. You can do a lot of very interesting things with this, all right? You can also animate it and keyframe it. I'm going to show you that in a second, all right? This is what the f-stop value does. I never went into all these other things like ratio. I don't really know what this stuff does. You can see it changes how the scene looks a little bit or the rotation or the blades. This is also, you can just look up. It's basically simulating the amount of blades and the aperture of the camera or something. It's the details that I never got into. I don't think they're that important, but maybe you find something interesting. So you might want to look up what this means and what it does and all that different shit. You can also focus on a specific point, right? You can select a particular object and it's going to focus on that no matter what, right? So now even if we move our camera further out, it's still going to focus only on that point, okay? Wherever the camera is, you're only going to be focusing on one specific object. That's also a pretty cool feature of this depth of field thing. This can make your renders a lot better, so try to use it sometime when you're rendering something next time, okay? Let's see, what else are we going to talk about here, okay? I'm also going to cover the resolution, all right? When you're in your camera view, by default, you're probably going to have like 1920 by 1080. This is where you define the resolution of your final render. This is like full HD. If you have a monitor, this is probably what it is to, to cover full screen, right? You can change this value to something like 1000 by 1000, and now you're going to have a square image. And this is typically what you're going to need if you're trying to upload something, let's say uh, ArtStation, okay? On ArtStation, you have thumbnails uh, for every artwork, which are one by one, okay? So this is probably how you're going to want to render those artworks. If you put a picture like this, it's going to get cropped and it's not going to look the way you want it to look on ArtStation, right? So you're probably going to want to uh, take care of the ratio and the format and whatnot. You can also make it larger. You can make a 4K. I don't know what the numbers are for 4K, but you can change the resolution here. But this is different. This, now, now we're getting into rendering a little bit. I'm going to show you one more last trick for today, guys, for the camera, which I think is also super important. And that's that's a little bit about animating the camera. Okay. I'm going to pull out my... Uh, you can go to your animation screen. Then you got this thing on the side. Okay. This is probably the easiest way to do it. All right. You go to animation workspace. You have your little timeline over here. Just simple keyframes. Pay attention because this is also important. Whatever you're animating, you're gonna need this concept of keyframes. But I'm gonna show you how to do this with the camera. Let's say we have our camera right here. We place that with Control Alt Zero. Let me bring back my screen gas keys. And now I have to bring this slider all the way to the beginning to frame one. I'm gonna press I and the location rotation. I'm gonna lock that. So on this frame now the camera is over here. But I can now move the camera. Let's say I'm gonna bring my marker first to like frame 80. And then I'm going to move my camera somewhere over here like this. And then I'm going to press I again and lock the rotation and location. All right. So now if we play this animation with space or this button down here, the camera kind of slides from one place to another. Right. And now you can do all kinds of animations. You can also just press T and and to switch it to linear. It's going to change the interpolation of the keyframes. I'm going to make another video about this. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments. We can talk about keyframing and animations a little bit more. But just bear in mind that this is something that you can keyframe. This is how keyframes work. If you animate the camera, you can make a little cool animation for your for your scene and turn it into a little into a more interesting way to present your artwork. Right? Maybe you can also spin the scene or something, and then uh, and then have like a spinning a spinning view of your tank or whatever model it is you're trying to present. But that's all, that's all I have for you guys today for the camera. If you have any questions, again, let me know below. And we let me know what you want to see next. And I'll see you guys in the next one, all right?